Last week we talked about fat, mostly fat 32. We mentioned fat 12 and fat 16 a little bit. But we focused on fat 32 because that is a format that is commonly used on quite a few USB drives. And we actually use some USB sticks uh, to, to examine and to demonstrate. This lesson is about NTFS. And NTFS, for quite some time, has been the workhorse file system for the Windows platform. NTFS goes back quite a ways. Where it really hit its stride was in NT3.51. Um, it, it existed before that, but that's really, I think, where it, it came of its own. Now, these slides are actually adapted from slides uh, created by Neil Christensen, who is with Microsoft, and I've adap adapted them, and I've adapted them for this class. So what we're going to do is a high-level overview of NTFS, um, and actually it's not quite as high-level as, as maybe you might think. I'm actually going to um, use a C++ program to show you some of its data structures. Then we'll go through and we'll talk about features that were added in Windows 2000, features added in Vista, features added in Windows 7, and features added in Windows 8. The reason it's important is because this gives you a historical context to understand today's NTFS. So by going through each one of these, we can, we can get a really good understanding. And you may have to investigate any of these older versions of NTFS. It's kind of like FAT. Remember FAT? We had quite a few uh, earlier versions. And while my programs only examined uh, the latest version of FAT32, you still may be called on to look at earlier versions. So NTFS is a journaled file system. And that is really important because it gives you a lot more robustness. Uh, for instance, if the power goes out or, or something happens, a journaled file system is going to uh, be able to recover when, you, when the power comes back on. Maybe not 100% of the time, but most of the time. Um, NTFS was developed in the early 1990s, as I said. Um, it was developed before NT uh, 3.51, that's the operating system, Microsoft's operating system. But I think it, it, it really came of its own and matured in uh, NT 3.51. Its primary architect was Tom Miller. Um, he was with Microsoft. He was a long time Microsoft. I, I believe he's retired since, but as with many of those early Microsoft guys, um, his stock options uh, saw him well. So NTFS was part of the N NT 3.1 release. That, that's where it goes back to. And as I'm alleging, it's 3.51 where it really uh, hit its stride. Windows 2000 included an incompatible physical format change. Um, we haven't had that since, since Windows 2000. Windows 2000, in my opinion, was a really... Windows 2000, in my opinion, was a breakthrough. I know we had... a NT 3.51, and then really NT 4.0 was such a workhorse in the Microsoft world. But Windows 2000 added so much, and it represented such a monumental uh, advance in technology that uh, th there were things such as that, um, that that sort of didn't work out just because they were being so ambitious. There was also a, an in-memory database that Windows 2000 almost shipped with. It was in the it was in the uh, beta versions. Um, I was actually hoping for that, but they just couldn't work out some of the um, they just couldn't work out some of the, the, the things with it in time. So the current disk format version is 3.1, and we can actually um, use FSUtil to examine our our systems and find out what version we have. So here I have a command prompt running in administrative mode, and make sure you're running your command prompt in administrative mode, or, or this won't work correctly. Um, and don't just look at this. Go ahead and, you know, pause the, the video and do this yourself. But we're going to use the fsutil program. So you type, from the command prompt, you type fsutil, fsinfo, ntfsinfo, and then whatever drive you want to look at. So that would be C for my system drive. And this actually shows you quite a bit of information. 
shows you the serial number, which is going to, going to be important as you trace through and, and match evidence to hard drives. Um, the versions, uh, the number of sectors. Now, this is all in hex, so you would have to actually use the calculator to go ahead and um, convert that. Bytes per sector, 512, and that's basically what we've come to expect, 512, although as I've said many times, it doesn't have to be. Bytes per physical sector, bytes per cluster, bytes for file record segment. Now this file record segment, that actually translates to the master file table entry or MFT entry. Okay, we'll talk about that more. Um, more information and uh, I think the resource manager identifier is another thing that, that you would be interested in as an investigator because you want to make sure you're able to match here again the, the drive, the, the physical drive with the, the evidence you collected. Now I have a flash drive out here. Oh, and, and the same thing here. I can go ahead and get the same information. You notice the number of sectors and total clusters and stuff is a lot less. Um, the same basic information. The size of that that the size of that USB stick is a lot less than the size of my hard drive. So that's FS util. So NTFS uses what's known as the Aries style of journaling. And if you have an interest, there's a, a reference to a PDF that really describes it very thoroughly. What it does, though, is it uses a transaction model to make atomic updates to file system metadata. So that way, if you do something, it's always there's always a record of exactly what happened. And if somewhere in that transaction something messes up, so if somewhere along the way during that transaction something fails, you can actually go back and roll back the entire transaction. So there's a circular log called uh, dollar sign log, and that's an actual file, and it's used to track uh, metadata changes. Now we'll we'll explore this, but there are quite a few metadata files on the the NTFS um, volume, and dollar log is one of them. So metadata changes are committed to dollar log before the actual metadata file. Okay, every five seconds NTFS checkpoints uh, dollar log. And after an unclean dismount, the file system metadata can quickly be restored to a consistent state by processing dollar $log. Um, now, this is almost always true, but not 100%, but it's, it's pretty close to 100%. So here I have um, an application called NTFS Log Analyzer, and it's a free program, so you definitely need to download this and take a look at it. So I'm going to leave my C drive alone since it's a pretty big drive, but I'm going to take a look at my O drive, which is NTFS. By the way, it's only going to show you what's NTFS. I have a couple of FAT32 partitions, and uh, it did not I'll bring those up. So, okay, so I single click here. There's a button below here, below the capture area that says Start Scan. So there's nothing there because it's a newly formatted uh, disk, and I haven't made any changes. So now I'm going to be brave and open up one of my other drives. And I will go ahead and open up E. E still is a fairly large external USB drive. Okay. So there's really nothing in the log here. Once um, NTFS acts on, on, on it, it empties the log out. But if there's something pending, you can actually use this tool to see. NTFS, like everything else, is going to have its own limits. And most of these limits are inherent in the way it's set up and inherent in the, the uh, PC's architecture. Its cluster size can range from 512 bytes to 64K. Um, as we've said, you know, it defaults to 4K or 4096 bytes, but it, can, it still has a range that it can be. It's always going to be some sort of a power of 2. The maximum volume size is 2 to the 32 minus 1 clusters. Okay, so this is 16 terabytes um, at a default 4K cluster size. That's pretty big. I don't have any drives that big. Or if you're if you're willing to go with 64K clusters, you can 
you can create a volume that's 256 terabytes. Now bear in mind with 64K clusters, small disk files are going to waste a lot of space. So the maximum file size is 16 terabytes. Um, this increased the volume size in Windows 8. So in Windows 8, if you have a volume that's larger than 16 terabytes, you can have a file uh, larger than 16 terabytes. Maximum file name lengths, 256 Unicode characters, um, or 33,760 Unicode characters for a full path name. So these are uh, very usable uh, limits. I've never even come close to that. I do name my files pretty with pretty long names. I've never gotten close to 255. So the maximum extents per file is about 1.5 million. And just so you know, an extent is a contiguous area of storage reserved for a file in a file system. Okay, It's represented as a range. So this is a list of the um, metadata files. We've already talked about the, the, the dollar log file. And the next thing we're going to talk about is the dollar MFT. MFT stands for uh, Master File Table. It's sort of synonymous to the FAT in FAT32, but really kind of not. Um, dollar bitmap, dollar volume, dollar boot, dollar upcase, dollar secure, dollar bad cluster, and dollar extend. Um, we're only going to briefly touch on all of those um, as far as it goes. We're going we're gonna, to more than anything focus on the MFT because that has a lot more to do with gathering um, evidence and information in, in an investigation. So this is how everything is normally uh, laid out. Um, the red the red sector is, is the master boot record. And we're going to take a really close look at that in a few minutes. Um, similar to FAT, uh, the very first sector has to be the master boot record. Um, that way the operating system knows where to go to. And there's no guessing. It doesn't have to have a special configuration. It always goes to the very first boot sec the very first sector on the hard drive. Um, now, in fact, the next thing that came was, was that sort of reserve system area, and we said you know, in, in modern versions of FAT that was the FS, but, but really the, the part that we were focused on in FAT was, was the FAT, the FAT1 and FAT2. Here in NTFS, the next thing that comes is the master file table. Um, notice that the copy of the master file table comes at the very end of the volume. Now, you're going to find this interesting, but my USB stick, it's, it's swapped. The master file copy, master file table copy comes first, and the actual master file table comes at the end. So it doesn't have to be in the order you see in the slide. It could actually be swapped. And then the, the green area is the um, file system data. The file system data, obviously, is where the file, file stuff goes and, and subdirectories and, and so forth. This is a snapshot of how NTFS is laid out. So the NTFS boot sector is similar to the FAT32 boot sector. In fact, the first 11 bytes are, are identical. Um, there's that 3-byte jump and 8-byte OEM. Then a little differently, there's the BIOS parameter block. And remember in FAT32, we had a BIOS parameter block and an extended BIOS parameter block. So all the information is, is collected up into one BIOS parameter block for NTFS, and we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Then comes this bootstrap code, and finally uh, end one and end two, and that's that's going to be the, the hex 55 and, and hex AA. So that marks the end of the boot sector. So here's the BIOS parameter block. Um, it contains all the information that the operating system needs to um, act on the act on the disk. I'd like to point out that some of these fields are a throwback to um, the FAT BIOS parameter block. For instance, you'll see you'll see some some unused and always zero um, fields unused too, and so forth. So so these are where there used to be something for FAT, and now they, they just sort of are ignored in NTFS. 
So you have bytes per sector, sectors per cluster. No, no surprise there, bytes per sector normally 512, sectors per cluster normally 8. So we'll talk about the reserve sector count when we, we look at the actual program I wrote. Media type is the next one you're going to be interested in. Sectors per tracks, num heads, hidden sectors, not used by NTFS, not used by NTFS2. Um, those are values that you probably don't need. Total sectors um, is important. That's going to give you sort of the, the maximum data you can put on the, the disk. So logical cluster of MFT1 and logical cluster of MFT2, that's what we're going to use to seek to the MFT. So seek to either the first MFT or the, the mirror MFT. Actually, MFT1 is the, is the primary MFT. MFT2 is, is the mirror MFT. And the reason you have two copies, as with FAT, is because it's such an important data structure. We, we have a backup, so we, we get redundancy. Uh, clusters per file record segment. Um, that should be clusters per file record segment. We'll take a look at that when we look at the program. Clusters per index buffer. We'll take a look at that also. Unused, throwback to FAT. Volume serial number, same thing. And the check sound, um, I have not seen used. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm just getting zeros when I examine these, these drives. Okay, so here I've written a C++ program. And I have a data structure that represents the boot sector here. Notice the, the three byte jump in the OEM code. Remember, that's really the same as FAT32. And there's a BIOS parameter block, which remember in FAT32 was that there was a BIOS parameter block and an extended BIOS parameter block. So this is very similar. Then we have the bootstrap code and the end of sector marker. Going back up here to the BIOS parameter block, we have some pretty... So those two values are no surprise. This you'll be interested in. Um, most of this information you can skip over because um, the sectors per track and num heads, that the operating system needs that. Um, these two pieces of information are extremely important so you can find the MFTs. Volume serial number. Um, that can be used to identify the, the, the hardware and check some. Here again, here again I've, I'm just getting zeros. Okay, so let's run this program. And sectors per cluster, 8 bytes per sector, 512. Now let's open the disk. And this is going to read the root sector, the boot sector. Here the uh, OEM is NTFS. Remember with, with FAT32 it was uh, MS-DOS 5.0. And let's take a look at the BIOS parameter block. Um, 512 bytes per sector. 8 sectors per cluster. Uh, media type. Um, pointers to the MFT and so forth. So very important uh, information for your investigation. So um, so the MFT record is, is actually quite large. It's, it's quite a bit larger than the 32-byte the FAT directory entry. Okay, And because of this, this extra space, NTFS actually has a lot more information um, and is a much smarter and is a much smarter file system. So let's take a look at this yellow area. That's the um, that's actually the MFT header. Um, it always starts with a it always starts with the signature F I L E. And uh, in, in just a minute, I'm going to go and and show you. We that's part of the program I wrote. The next part actually is the attribute header, and that that has the times and dates and so forth. Some of them, not all of them, it has the creation time and date really. Um, and then comes the, the attribute data, and that has the other dates that, that are important for um, NTFS files. And almost all of this, even, even the next two sections, um, have to do with all attributes that um, all attributes that describe this file. You can see 
that there's a file name, there's a file size, um, and so forth. In fact, there's not only a file name, long file name, but there's actually the, the shortened file name for if you're in, in a DOS prompt and you can't if you're in a DOS if you're in a command prompt and you can't uh, display long file names. Okay, so we're still back we're back to the program. I didn't stop the program, it's still actually in the debugger where we left it. But I want to point out that there's this uh, variable type called large integer, which is a 64-bit integer. And the reason this is needed is because um, the, the, the numbers get so big. I mean, 16 terabytes is more than you can um, 16 terabytes is more than you can describe with, say, a long or an integer. Well, that's actually not true. A 64-bit integer you could. But um, what they did was they created this large integer and they used that for safety. That way, regardless of if you're compiling for 32 or 64-bit uh, programs, it's going to work. So here I went ahead and I've got this thing called BR. And that's actually, that will be what will be returned. Um, so I set that to zero. Um, this is the cluster we're going to seek to. Okay. And notice that I have to address the low part and the high part as separate things. Now there is a quad part. I could I could use it, but what I already I I have a D word. That doesn't necessarily translate to the quad part. So I just set the low part and set high part to zero. And then my bytes per sector, I do the same thing. And then um, sectors per cluster, I do the same thing. Finally. Now that I've got all the large integers, now that I've got all the large integers set up, I can actually safely do the multiplication so I can find out where to seek to. And once I do that, see I'm multiplying the quad parts now. Okay, and that's actually the same as multiplying a long long. If in C there's a, a variable called long long that's always guaranteed to be guaranteed to be 64 bits. There's a long long that's all, always guaranteed to be 64 bits. So it's the same thing. However, uh, you can't really use a long long because um, these API calls um, don't expect it. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through this. These are all pretty normal operations. And here we do the multiplying. And let's take a look at this. That's a pretty big number. And we're going to seek to that place on disk. Now we're going to read the master file, the, MF, the first MFT record header. Okay, let's examine that. Okay. Um, here's the magic header, F I L E. Offset to the update sequence, and that's that's an offset within the MFT record. Okay, the operating system maintains this, this, this. Yes. Okay, the offset to the first um, attribute. Remember, the very first section is the record header, and right after that is the the uh, is the attribute header, and that's actually essentially what this points to. Okay, this is the size of the file record. This is the allocated size of the file record. That's basically how much space that the whole MFT takes up. Okay. So that's essentially the, the most important information. So that's the most important information in that record header. So I have two USB sticks in my computer. One is one uses FAT32, and I believe we looked at that in the last lesson. And the other one uses NTFS. So let's take a look at the FAT32 disk. Um, and as you'd expect, we have a boot sector. And we, we actually examine that pretty uh, in depth. FAT1, FAT2, okay. Root directory. And notice that we've got these files that WinHex has found for us. And here's a subdirectory that I can take a look at. Okay. So that's what we looked at last week, and that's pretty much what you'd expect. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the NTFS disk. You notice it, it actually has a root directory. It's got this subdirectory and all these files just like the fat disk. But notice it's got a lot more of these dollar sign metafiles. 
The one that's really important to us is the MFT. Okay, so there you can see the MFT and you can see the MFT mirror. And here's the log file that uh, we had talked about before. So that just gives you a side-by-side -side comparison of what uh, a FAT32 a FAT32 USB device looks like and, a, and an NTFS device looks like side-by-side -side in WinHex.